Good afternoon and welcome. This webinar is a collaboration between the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, and the Department of Veterans Affairs, VHA National Chaplain Service. My name is Nicholas Walters, and I am one of the outreach specialists in CFBNP. I will be your moderator this afternoon. Everyone's mic has been muted. If you have any questions during the presentation today, please type them in the Q&A box to the right of the screen. I will read the questions at the end of the presentation and the presenter will provide a response. This presentation will be sent to everyone that has registered for today's event and reminder, this is a live recording. I would like to thank Chaplain Kimberly Willis for her time today, this afternoon, and we are grateful for your service. But before we get started, I would like to introduce Conrad Washington, the Director for Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Conrad Washington serves as the director for the VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Mr. Washington retired from the United States Marine Corps with 20 years of active military service with a combat tour in 2004 in support of Operation Enduring Iraqi Freedom. Mr. Washington is a licensed minister actively serving in his faith. He received his MDIV in pastoral studies from Moody Theological Seminary. MA in Business Administration from the University of Redlands and a Bachelor's of Science degree in Education from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. Additionally, he is a graduate of VA's Class of 2017 Virtual Aspiring Leaders Program. At this time, I give you Mr. Washington. Thank you, Nicholas. I appreciate it. I'm trying to block the sun here. It's peeping through my blinds in the office, but I thank you all for joining us today uh, on, uh, on a special occasion because I have one of my colleagues that I I have so much respect today, uh, and that's Chaplain Willis. Ma'am, thank you for taking time today as well for sharing with us your program. Uh, although we have different missions, there are definitely points of intersection uh, as you and I have worked together uh, for some years on different uh, different occasions. So I'm glad you're here. I appreciate it. I know it's going to be very helpful to those who, who join us today. Uh, we want to do a few things. First, we want to acknowledge that uh, this month is Black History Month uh, in recognition of uh, the contributions that African Americans have made to this country. Uh, I would ask you that uh, you continue to uh, keep the Turkey, Syria victims, uh, their families and loved ones in your prayer because of the earthquake uh, as they uh, go through that, which is a very uh, difficult time. Uh, and then most recently, the Michigan State shooting as well. Uh, it just seems that so many things are going on. Uh, but here's some good news. The good news is the VA is here. Uh, we want to love on you. And how we love on you is sharing with you that uh, the PACT Act, you may have heard about it, P-A-C-T, the PACT Act was signed uh, August of 2022, it expanded health care and benefits for millions of veterans and their survivors, right? And uh, we're excited about uh, people joining and learning more about the PAC Act. Uh, it includes veterans from the Vietnam era, the Gulf War, and post-911. And I will share with you that 97% chance that your benefits as a veteran will either increase or stay the same. Uh, so we ask you don't, uh, don't hesitate, get connected with the PAC Act to find out uh, how you can apply uh, and uh, for your benefits, just go to uh, www.va.gov backslash PACT, and we will have that uh, sent to you all as well, and it's on our website. Uh, without further ado, I hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Thank you. I would like to introduce now Chaplain Kimberly Willis. Please see her entire bio to the right of the screen. Chaplain Kimberly Willis serves as the Executive Director of the National VA Chaplain Service. In this role, Chaplain Willis advances spiritual care integration throughout the health care system by equipping and empowering chaplains to innovatively provide multi-tiered, broad-based programming and increase outreach and education of spiritual care practices through varied service modalities and platforms. Chaplain Willis most recently served as the National Program Manager of the Clinical Care and Education where she developed a national clinical pastoral education center to promote and enhance the professional development of all chaplains. At this time, I give you Chaplain Willis. I believe you're on mute, Chaplain Willis. Thank you for that. I had given a whole dissertation at this point. <laughs> But I just wanted to say thank you for inviting me to participate today in having this wonderful conversation. And with that, I will say next slide. So what we'll be talking about today is essentially just some 
basics about VA chaplaincy and what that looks like. And when I put VA chaplaincy, I think about that in, from my own frame. I really think of it as a faith walk. Every day, our chaplains at the various medical centers throughout the VA enterprise are walking into rooms, walking into spaces, with a level of faith that when they walk in, they will encounter an individual, whether it's a staff person, whether it's a veteran, whether it's a family member, um, and provide some hope with faith, provide some healing with faith, provide some comfort with faith. And so um, that's how I kind of imagine the walk of our chaplains throughout the VA. Next slide. And this picture really is a wonderful depiction is that truly it's just a leap every day of praying and hoping and dreaming and wishing and energizing those persons that we connect with so that they can connect with that deeper part of themselves that which is important to them that which they are called to and that who calls to them So next slide, please. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about who we are as chaplains within the VA context. We're gonna talk briefly about some of the distinctives that you will see that is very different from maybe a civilian context or even DOD. We will talk about our priorities uh, within VA, uh, we'll talk about some of the innovative things that our chaplains are doing across the nation. We'll talk about some of our outreach, and then uh, I'll give you a little snippet of just a few things that some of our chaplains are doing throughout the nation. And I love that part because I get to share and brag on on our chaplains. Next slide, please. So you've already had a, a brief discussion about who I am. And I just wanted to say, to add to the bio that was already read, is that I came to the VA um, after my service with the United States Air Force. And I wasn't really ready, or shall I rephrase that? I wasn't sure what I was going to encounter. I didn't know how it was the same or how it would be different from being the chaplain in the military. But what I recognized at the moment that I walked through the doors was how amazing this ministry would be and how needed this ministry is to our veterans, which I happen to be one. Uh, the ministry was very different than my service um, in uniform. Um, but it gave me an opportunity to continue to serve uh, not just the veterans, but my na the nation as a whole. So it is truly a noble calling uh, to be a VA chaplain. Next slide. So in my office, we have um, national program managers that work with certain areas. And one of our national program manager managers is Chaplain Matthew Cassidy. He works on the community clergy training program, which is strongly connected um, to this program and what they are doing. So we're really grateful to have this partnership. Uh, he develops oversight for spiritual care for our transitioning service members. And he also works with our virtual education program. But more specifically, he works with our suicide prevention and postvention program, which I will talk about a little bit later in depth when I go into some of the innovative work that we're doing. Next slide, please. Our next national program manager is Chaplain Chad Maxey. Uh, Chaplain Maxey is a truly uh, a fire starter. He gets involved in things and he just makes things happen. He was pivotal in ensuring that we got a agreement with our civil air patrol partners um, to provide um, interments for those veterans who could not find um, any assistance um, their families when when they passed away to be interred into our national cemeteries and so that partnership was really provided a service for our surviving families that was so much needed and very pivotal in their process for healing um, and um, 
working through their own bereavement. He also works um, with our family and caregiver support programs, as well as our Warrior to Soulmate uh, program, which is a very innovative program as well. He also works with suicide prevention and a, a host of other areas within our national office. Next slide, please. So we currently have a vacant position uh, for one of our national program manager, managers who specifically deals with clinical pastoral education. Some of you may or may not know what that is, but clinical pastoral education is a program which is essentially um, a residency that happens for chaplains to get the practical application of working in a, a clinical facility to learn the skills and competencies that are needed so that they could be successful in those various areas when they are actually out on their own. So that's the primary role of um, clinical pastoral education. Uh, this chaplain also works with our electronic health record document, which basically is the, the format by which we make sure that we provide complete our clinical notes for the encounters that we have with our with our veterans. Next slide. Next slide. Um, it looks like the audio is on. Okay, great. All right, next slide. All right, well, you know, it never fails that technology will do something strange, uh, but that's okay. I, I know that we'll get through it and it is well. Um, so we have uh, also on our team, uh, three clinical pastoral educators. Uh, we're excited to have them on board because they're providing uh, tip of the spear education professional development, if you will, to our current staff chaplains, providing them opportunities to get more clinical pastoral education where they can specialize in certain areas and get some more training in those spaces, um, which has been very uh, instrumental in, in raising the skill development and those skill sets for all of our chaplains throughout um, the enterprise. All right, let's go back to go to the next slide. Uh, we have uh, three national program coordinators. Two of those positions are currently vacant. I'm sorry, one of those positions is currently vacant. We're working on uh, getting those that position filled. And those positions currently are filled by Chaplain Will Chronic and Chaplain Will Kanar. Next slide. For our administrative team, we have Mr. William Patterson. Uh, he is one of our gurus uh, that helps us in all areas administrative. I would love to say that he just does this or he just does that, but he is a jack of all trades uh, and has really helped us as we continue to move forward to expanding, growing, and um, uh, developing our own policies and programming within the office. Our current uh, administrative officer position is vacant, but we are in process of hiring that position as well. Next slide. All right, so getting down to a little bit more of the, the, the meat of the matter of who we are, we are spiritual care clinicians. And what does that mean? Essentially, that means that we are not um, provisioners of a particular faith group. So for instance, if I'm Baptist or Jewish or Muslim or whatever I might be, I am not um, moving into a room to project my my Baptist, my my Catholic, my Pentecostal understanding and ways upon that veteran. I am a spiritual care clinician, so I'm really looking at that person, that individual person that is in front of me. And I'm helping them to discover what their spirit, who, who they are spiritually and what that means and how they define it, how they understand it, 
how do they actually use their own spiritual strengths and and tools and resources so that they can be whole, well, and healthy. Uh, we're we're not lone rangers. Uh, we don't go at it alone. We are a part of an interdisciplinary treatment team, which is inevitably vitally important. Um, it's so important that chaplains are at the table having these conversations with our mental health providers, our social workers, our polytraumas, our docs, our nurses, and we're all talking together so that we're really looking at the veteran from a whole person landscape and developing a treatment plan that really speaks to that veteran. Um, we are someone who hears the story. I will say, and and I I um I freely admit that I I come from a Christian background, and so I often think of Jesus Christ and his example. And one of the things that he did so very well was he listened. He listened to people. And so chaplains are called to listen. They're called to be in the space with people. So if you're in the gutter in that moment, then I pull up a seat next to you and we hang out in that gutter and we have we're, we sit in silence or we are in dialogue, but we are there together in that moment. And I'm as a chaplain letting you know that you are not journeying alone. For those who have ever been in uniform, it's there's this saying about I got your six. That means I got your back. And that's what chaplains do. They have your back. They're sitting in that space with you um, while you're in that uh, hospital context. Uh, we are called to work with folks from all spiritual traditions and backgrounds. We are no respect of person. Uh, it is come as you are, and we will meet you where you are. Um, by law, by Cong Congress, congressionally made mandated law, chaplains are the only spiritual care providers within the context of the VA. Um, and we also really move to advocate for our patients. Uh, Whatever is happening, sometimes we, we need to do some advocacy. There might be some traditions, rituals, sacraments, understandings of your spiritual context that the healthcare team may not be aware of or understand how it applies or interacts with your medical care. And so the chaplains serve as a conduit to make sure that that communication flow is open and clear as well as to make sure that your, your rights and your needs are being addressed um, in the most respectful, respectful and honoring way that they possibly can. Uh, we make sure that if the resources that a veteran needs, the family member uh, needs as it relates to their spiritual or religious beliefs, if we can't provide it as, as a chaplain there, then it's our job to figure out how do we get those resources that you might need. So th those are just some of the things that we, we engage in and we ensure happens within our context. Next slide, please. All right. So if you notice um, in that first bullet, there's a highlighted statement. That statement says a call within a call. So there's one thing to be called, called to ministry and however one defines ministry. Um, but then there's this call to VA ministry, which is very a very specific population, a population of pers persons who have served and because they did uh, serve, was in a position to give all, sacrifice all for their country. And so when I say a call within a call, it's really truly a call to a specialized demographic um, and a call towards their healing uh, and a call towards their, their wholeness. Um, 
we all have every chaplain has to be endorsed by a religious organization, a spiritual organization of such. Um, and we all walk within those contexts. Uh, so it's important that we are faith walkers, if you will. Um, again, we do minister to people with all faith traditions and backgrounds and people who have no faith tradition or background. Uh, we also serve as clinical providers in the healthcare setting to, to staff members. We do that on a, a more limited basis because our primary focus is on veterans, but we are also there to provide spiritual care to our staff as needed. Next slide, please. So what does it take to become a chaplain? Um, what are some very distinctives? Every chaplain hired into VA chaplaincy minimally has a Master's of Divinity. That is the base requirement to become a VA chaplain. Uh, we have those who have the Master's of Divinity, doctors of ministry and PhDs. And so you will see a wide spectrum between those three graduate level degrees within the core. Uh, most of our chaplains have anywhere between one to three year clinical practicums. Those clinical practicums, practicums are that clinical pastoral education that I spoke about. To become a VA chaplain, um, at a GS9, which is our entry rate, you can come in with that Masters of Divinity, um, but you have to be working towards board certification. So you have to obtain board certification within two years. If you don't uh, obtain board certification, you cannot stay employed within the Department of Veteran Affairs as a chaplain. We also have persons who are not just board certified, but also have a specialty certification in things such as mental health or suicide prevention or moral injury. And those things are extremely important, hospice and palliative care as well. Uh, presently, these numbers are just a little bit off. Uh, last check, we have 130 full-time chaplains and we have 1,250 um, VA facilities that that cover that all of these chaplains cover. Um, so those facilities include 172 medical centers and then a little over a thousand VA outpatient centers. The care that we provide comes in a number of ways. So we do telechaplaincy. So for instance, um, in a different platform, we would use something similar to what we're doing right now, except for you would be seeing me and I would be seeing you and we would be having a counseling session in that way. We also do face-to-face, -face, meaning that you would come into our community-based outpatient clinics and or the medical facility, and we would have uh, individual sessions or we could potentially have group sessions. Next slide, please. Right, as I said before, we, we serve a specialized population. We have to have minimally four units of CPE. And so within the VA, we only take clinical pastoral education from two entities. Right now, that's DCPE, Association Clinical Pastoral Education, as well as ICPT. Um, we, you must be board certified and as, previously stated, you also have to be endorsed. You have to have an ecclesiastical endorsement prior to being hired onto the VA. Now, an interesting thing, something that just happened over the last two years and something that we're super excited about is that we are Title 38 hybrid employees. Why is that exciting? Because we used to be what we call Title V employees and Title V employees are administrative employees. Uh, whereas our work is very much uh, a clinical exercise. So now we're being recognized as clinical chaplains, which is extremely exciting. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we do require functional statements um, to describe the work that we do and what that looks like. 
Uh, we used to have hiring that happened within the national office. And so some of you who are a little bit more <clears throat> familiar with uh, VA national chaplaincy, you might remember that as the paradigm. Well, now all hiring is done at the local level. Um, jobs are often posted on USA jobs. However, they no longer are because we're hybrid 38 have to be posted on USA jobs. Uh, those things can be um, posted internally. So for any of those who are folks who are on the call today that might be interested in VA chaplaincy, I would actually give a call to that local facility to that chaplain's office and talk to the chief of chaplains and see if there's anything getting ready to open up. And again, you have to meet certain requirements. And if so, you can have that conversation and submit resume for a possibility to be considered if there are some positions getting ready to open up. Uh, so there's three types of folks that we see, which I've already mentioned. Of course, we, we care for the veteran. We care for the veterans families and we care for staff. I want to go back to families a little bit because families are, are defined a little bit more broadly. Uh, when we're thinking about the veteran. So for us, when we're really thinking about the family, we're not thinking about mother, daughter, son, <clears throat> husband, wife, which may be part of that, but it could be that person that has walked alongside this veteran for the last 10 years and has been their caregiver or their significant other. So we, we look at it a little bit more broadly. We also provide spiritual assessments and complete uh, spiritual care treatment plans, which I'll discuss a little bit further along in, in our conversation today. Next slide. So what are our priorities? Well, we have a lot. I just wanted to give you a snapshot of a few. Uh, so one of the things that we're really trying to do in order to broaden our footprint as we recognize that folks that are in a rural area often have a hard time uh, navigating to the main facility. So we wanna make sure that we're able to provide that spiritual care broadly. So we wanna increase our use of um, virtual care modalities. We wanna make sure that we're doing more community clergy training programs and, and connecting with all of you to give us the space and the venues to come into your, your places of worship, your places of gathering, um, so that we can tell you the story, if you will, of the VA and how to connect to the VA and how to deal more effectively with moral injury and suicide uh, prevention. So those are the types of things that we do when we come doing, during our outreach uh, opportunities. And we, we can talk more about that in a little bit. We want to make sure that we're hiring the best applicants. We want to streamline those processes and bring folks on board as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we want to make sure that we offer our current chaplains the best professional development plans as possible. And we do that in a lot of ways. We do that in what we call the professional flourishing university. That is a mouthful, I know, but I love the flair of it. Uh, but essentially what we're looking at is ensuring that from the beginning stages of your career as a VA chaplain, all the way until sunset, that you have opportunities to enhance your skill set, to advance through the ranks, if you will, if you so choose to, and to provide you the methodology and the strategy by which to do those things. So we want to make sure that we're we're doing that, and we do that in a number of ways. Um, which I'll talk a little bit more about. We want to make sure that we have the best, the brightest. Um, and so that's why we demand that folks are board certified. We demand that they have um, graduate level degree, master's divinity specifically. We demand that they are endorsed ecclesiastically. Um, and we try to ensure that that process of ecclesiastical endorsers, that that process is clear and understood and, and streamlined as well. Um, and 
def, def, definitely developing programs and policies that make sense boots on the ground and not a lot of redundancies or errors in, in what we're doing. Next slide, please. So some of the care focuses that we have is in bereavement care, uh, trauma-informed care, which is things such as PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder or military sexual trauma, you know, other mental health issues, acute and chronic, um, dealing with moral injuries, suicide prevention and intervention, um, and then just developing more um, evidence-based practices. Again, we, we are champions for those persons that are in our care. And it doesn't matter if it's staff, veterans, or family members. We want to help our staff in our efforts to, you know, decrease employee burnout. Um, ensure that when our veterans come in, they are connecting with staff members that are ready, that's that's excited, that's not burnt out, will be gone and tired, right? So we work really hard with other healthcare team members to partner with and to work with to really try to help our staff stay on top of things emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. Next slide, please. All right, so some of our innovations, which are pretty exciting. Uh, most recently, we, uh, we have developed a pilot with the National Cemetery Administration, which also falls under the Department of Veteran Affairs. And so the National Cemetery Administration, there is national cemeteries throughout the nation. Um, and so we have partnered with them and we have embedded a chaplain at the Riverside uh, National Chaplain, uh, National Cemetery in California. This is the first time that this has actually happened, and that particular individual is responsible for providing bereavement care for uh, um, the families of the deceased veteran, as well as doing internments and caring for the staff at that local facility. And what we have found has been extremely uh, uh, exciting because it's, it really has proven the need to have um, a chaplain embedded in these places. We, we really have seen uh, just in the short time that she's been there uh, that over 140 persons have been impacted by her care. Um, there's been over 140 requests for for more work, uh, so it's it's just extremely exciting, and our hope is to get this rolled out as we do do more studies and develop our metrics out, and then have this program throughout all of the national cemeteries. Um, our chaplain professional uh, development leg uh, recently. Uh, we have gotten provisional accreditation for our program that is specific to our to providing uh, that education to our staff members, uh, which is really great because it gives allows that education to be to happen in house, which means that um, all things are flowing for that staff chaplain to get professional development while also doing the very important work that they are doing for the VA every day. Um, we also have suicide prevention and post prevention tools that um, I'll show you in the next slide and some things around caregiver support. So next slide, please. All right, so as I was saying, that National Cemetery pilot started in November 2020, and that program, we have gotten more uh, email responses from folks calling in saying how meaningful it was to have a chaplain to come and provide uh, internment for their loved one who was not affiliated with any religious group or had any affinity for one, but what how much it meant for the family to have someone um, who 
represented spirituality, represented goodness, um, to come and preside over those services, and then to offer them some bereavement care where they're able to process their their grief. So it's it's been a wonderfully impactful heart soul type of ministry um, that is so much needed at end of life not just for the one who is transitioning, but for those of us who have to um, be left behind. Next slide, please. So our professional development, our uh, professional flourishing university has four legs to it. So one leg is research. What we have discovered um, is that a lot of the research as it relates to spirituality, uh, religion uh, is not often done by persons who are in the in the vocation of spiritual work or religion. It's often done by other um, disciplines, and so we're really wanting to get lend our own voice to what does it mean to be a chaplain. What does it mean to provide care in certain ways? And so we're really beefing up. Our, our research area or in the nascent stages of that. Uh, the next thing that we do is the CPE program, which I've already told you about. But we're also doing a school of spiritual care praxis. So for that, we're really looking at the skill set and competencies that are required within the VA system. What does it take to be a PTSD chaplain? Uh, what does it take to be a polytrauma chaplain in the VA context? So we're really looking to drill down that and to provide some educational uh, resources there, along those lines. And then the School of Clinical Chaplaincy, this is something that we have not got started yet. It's, it's uh, something that we're still vetting, but we're looking at how can we even offer a graduate degree and connect with other uh, uh, accredited university to provide our chaplains another conduit to by which to enhance their professionalism. So that's just a few of the things that we're looking at in that particular area. Next slide, please. So with our CPE students, the VA has the largest uh, cadre of clinical pastoral education students in the nation. So we have 35 centers, and as I said, uh, we have uh, over a thousand students presently. And so we're super excited about, I'm sorry, over 140 students uh, in fiscal year 22. So super excited about that and what that looks like to be able to actually shape the future of chaplaincy, because all of those students will not be working in the VA. They'll go out into the community and be world changers in those spaces. Um, next slide, please. So I want to uh, talk a little bit about spiritual and moral distress and just try to give some very basic uh, definitions. And I, I want to caveat that statement of basic definitions because sometimes, depending on which book you read, you might get a different definition. So I just want to give a broad stroke definition so that we can talk a little bit more about um, what these things um, mean for us in the VA context as chaplains. Um, so when we think about spirituality, it truly is this intrinsic aspect of humanity um, where we are seeking meaning and purpose and transcendence. Uh, it's that place where we are in relationship, not just to ourselves, but to family and to other and community, uh, society, nature, um, that which is sacred to us. I think about my own spiritual walk. I feel myself most connected um, to all of God's created when I am outside walking in, in nature. That's where I experience that the most. And my, my prayer language becomes much more profound and intense and, and emotively felt. Um, 
spirituality expressed through your, our beliefs, our values, our traditions, and our practices. And so that's what spirituality is. But what is it when we are experiencing distress? It's really the converse of that. It's when we aren't connected to ourselves or that which brings us meaning, whether that be art or music or nature or, or whatever that is, is that when we can no longer connect, there is for some reason some disconnect. So we experience this dis-ease or this distrust within our spiritual selves. Moral injury, uh, which happens to be also highly associated with suicidality amongst our veterans um, to include such risk factors as PTSD as well. But it is that that deep sense that that to the core sense that there's something that has been an act of uh, uh, that has that has just went against all that you believe, all that you know is true, all that you know is right. Every value, every moral morality code that you live by has has just been violated in some way. And it could be acts that you have done or acts that someone else has done, or it could be things that you fail to do. And failure is how that person understands it's not necessarily what it truly is. Uh, next slide, please. So it manifests in our veterans um, in all areas of treatment. So it doesn't matter if a Veterans experience pain or substance use or homelessness or reproductive health issues. Um, every sphere of a veteran's treatment, you can see manifestations potentially of moral distress. Um, and it really contributes to how that person begins to engage how they see themselves and understand themselves and can lend itself towards higher risk of suicide, suicidality. Um, it can also overlap with other mental health disorders, uh, anything that's on the DSM-5, um, you may find it there as well. Next slide, please. So just some quick rates. Um, and this is rates as of September 22, which means now that these numbers are a little bit behind the curveball. But we see that um, as it relates to how our veterans are um, attempting to um, take their lives, we see that firearms is the highest rate of incidents. And of course, it shows that um, men. Um, are more likely than women at 72% to 48%. Uh, the next highest rate is suffocation. And we see that women tend to use this method more than men. Uh, and followed by poisoning, where we also see that women uh, use this route more than men as well. And then we have other means by which um, our veterans are attempting to uh, take their lives. Uh, there are many reasons that firearms could be um, so high within the veteran population. Uh, one of those is is simply familiarity and proximity. You know, a lot of veterans have handled uh, a weapon in some form or another. So there's no fear of a weapon. It's very familiar and comfortable. And many veterans post um, their military life continue to uh, own weapons. And so there is accessibility there. So one of the things that I could foot stomp and, and, and ask that you can help us with in your work with veterans is to do things as having a safe lock, to do things that they create a, a safe plan where if they're feeling unsafe, that they're going to call somebody, that their key is not 
right there. They have to go next door to get their key in order to even open it up. So it gives them a moment to pause. Whatever that plan is, the goal is, is to give them a moment to pause. Because that pause for them to actually think about what's happening could potentially save their lives. Next slide, please. All right. So um, veteran suicide in the United States uh, has, has a higher incidence here than anywhere else um, as it relates to our firearm use. But what's interesting is, is that veterans only make up 5.6% of the U.S. population, and it is so incredibly high rate. Um, so we want to do something different. But we want to have these important conversations and put some safety protocols in place. Again, whether that's safety locks, whether that's helping folks develop plans, whether that's having accountability partners, whatever it is that you can do uh, within your context is always helpful. And it's not a taboo conversation. So if you see a buddy and you're concerned about a buddy, talk to your buddy. Next slide, please. All right, so some of the tools that we bring to bear within uh, VA chaplaincy is that we do spiritual care screening. And so what's interesting about spiritual care screening is that this is typically done by someone who is not a chaplain. This is done by a nurse or provider or whomever in the uh, medical context that does a screen to see, hey, is there some spiritual concerns that this person have? And if they do, then we're going to refer them over to the chaplain to receive the care that they need. And then when they get to us, we do a spiritual assessment. And there's different models for spiritual assessments that are conducted throughout um, the enterprise. But the goal of the assessment is to really understand the spiritual distress, the spiritual dis-ease, and develop a plan by which to bring one to spiritual health. Um, and so we use that assessment to, to do that and to make it individualized to that veteran that we are working with. Next slide, please. All right, so we have the care, caregiver mentor support. So that's the work that we do for the people who are taking care of our veterans in their home. And so we provide them an opportunity to kind of breathe and decompress. If anybody has ever been a caregiver, you know how all consuming that can be. And so we offer, you know, just what is spirituality and dementia? You know, if you're dealing with a veteran who's working with dementia, how do you deal, work with, you get your own self care when you're in the midst of caring for others? Why is it important to care for yourself? How do you do, we do remembrance call where we remember those who have passed on and um, we honor their memory. We deal with holiday stress. Is it holiday stress without caring for somebody is high. It's doubly high when you're also a caregiver in that place. So we do lots of various classes. Um, or groups, if you will, um, for our caregivers to try to give them some resources to help them find ways to reach within themselves and to uh, grasp hold of that which is important to them um, so as a place and source of strength. Next slide, please. Some of the outreach that we do, uh, primary mode of outreach is our community clergy training program. It's an excellent program where, whereby our chaplain services uh, will go out and go into community clergy and invite the clergy in. And we have this wonderful discussion about PTSD, moral injury, uh, suicide prevention intervention. How do you connect veterans back to the VA so that they can get the help that they need? How do you develop veteran programs within your, um, your organization that will help bring healing and, and health to your veterans? So we have those uh, conversations and, and the stations that do that 
um, do that at various frequencies. And so if it's something that you're interested in, please call over to your local VA chaplain uh, office and have some conversation and see if it's something that they're doing or if it's something that you could be plugged in if another station is doing. Uh, we work collaboratively with DOD, our vet centers, all of our VSOs, VBA, and National Cemetery Administration. Next slide, please. All right, so some of the fun stuff. So this is actually a community clergy training event that happened in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And so as you can see, there's folks from all over, all ages, uh, all kinds of demographics, and they're all learning how they can best support the veterans in their various organizations. And we also have um, subject matter experts from the hospital to come and have conversation around these different topics and being able to provide immediate contact information and as well as um, materials to further educate and illuminate uh, their various roles. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the things that we try to focus in on is retreat, reflect, refresh, and restore. Self-care is important. Uh, whether you're in the community, whether you're a VA employee, whether you're uh, a staff member, a veteran, or a family member, we have to lean into our self-care. So this is just one of our uh, many retreats that we provide where we will go in and really flesh out what is retreat for you? What, what does it mean to reflect? What does it mean to refresh? Why, is it, why, are, why are any of these important? And then how do we come to a restorative place? And that's something that we do with our veterans in a group setting. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, when uh, the Department of De uh, Defense pulled out of Afghanistan, we had Afghanistan conversations throughout the nation. So veterans who were having some difficulties about that decision and struggle with it and um, related that to other military activities or actions that, that they still were trying to come to terms with. We begin to have listening sessions to have them give them an opportunity to really talk it out and flesh out some of that wonderful opportunity for healing um, and releasing some of the, the toxin that was inside of them because of their hurt and their pain around these particular issues. Next slide, please. All right, so there's nothing like some ice cream and chocolate. So this is our chaplains in uh, Puerto Rico who are providing, who was going around to all of the different um, staff members, um, just offering different treats and giving words of encouragement. It was just their word of encouragement day and that was part of it. So it's just exciting stuff to see. Next slide. Uh, this is um, a door that was decorated during Spiritual Care Week. It's our chaplain's door, but um, if you can recall, I remember I, I stated that chaplains are part of the interdisciplinary team. And so during Spiritual Care Week, her team decorated the door with just words of affirmation. So the chaplain who had been pouring out so much was being poured back into. And what a wonderful testament to her impact on that particular team. Next slide, please. Surely something resides in this heart that is not perishable and life is more than just a dream. That is that spiritual person, that spiritual part of ourselves that is growing every day that is abiding every day, even when these old bodies shall perish and pass away, our spirit shall still be here. Next slide, please. So faith truly is just belief in God's promise. Next slide. These are our references. And at this point, I believe I'm open for questions. Next slide. All right. Thank you for that presentation, Chaplain Willis. Um, 
since we have no questions in the Q&A box, I would like to remind everybody that her contact information for Chaplain Willis is on the screen. And at this time, I will bring Mr. Washington back on. Lastly, I would like to remind everybody that this presentation will be available at a later date on our website and to please follow us on uh, Facebook or um, check out our website to get a copy of this presentation and also a copy will be sent out later on as well. At this time, I give you Mr. Washington. Thank you, Nicholas. Chaplain Kimberly Willis, Executive Director of the National Chaplain Service in the VA. Ma'am, thank you so much. Very informative. We appreciate you so much. Uh, and I'm sure that folks are uh, much more educated uh, to your program and uh, specifically uh, the clergy training, because I get a lot of inquiries about that. So I'm glad uh, uh, you talked about that. So thank you again, ma'am. We appreciate it. For all of you joining us, again, thank you for joining us. We'll be back on uh, on the air here, so to speak, February the 28th for an overview of veteran and military spouse talent and engagement program. So until then, be blessed and take care of yourselves. <laughs>